So the purpose of this assignment is that you are going to investigate the effects of long-term exposure to a toxic chemical of your choice. Okay, so you can choose any toxic chemical you want, right? It can be something simple, it can be something complex, okay, it could be, it could be a drug, it could be something natural, okay? It's, it's entirely up to you. It just has to be a toxic chemical, okay? It has to be toxic by its chemical nature, okay? So like um, plutonium would not be a toxic chemical. It's radiologically toxic, but not chemically toxic. Okay, that means it's radioactive. It kills you that way instead of by poisoning you. Okay, uh, so it has to be something that is chemically toxic, right? Uh, so what you're going to include here okay, in this research project is you're going to research stuff about not only the health effects on the, of the chemical on the people that, that are exposed to it, but you're also going to look at the societal costs. Okay, what are the costs to average Joe Blow Canadian okay, uh, due to this chemical? All right, um, so that could be things like healthcare, taxation, government regulations, etc. Okay, the impacts of people using or being exposed to the chemical that could be behavioral costs, addiction treatments, emotional impacts, prison, okay, but you know, things like that, right? Um, so the scope of the paper goes beyond an examination of the health issues to encompass societal effects as well. So basically, your report's going to be broken up into two parts. Okay. There's going to be the part where you tell me all about the toxin. This is what it is. It's a molecular compound, or it's an ionic compound, or it's an element, and this is what it's like, and this is where you find it, or this is how they make it. Okay. All that stuff that's kind of the nuts and bolts of the chemical itself. Okay. That's also where you'll tell me things like when someone is exposed to this, either they breathe it in, or it's in their water, or whatever. Okay. Uh, you're talking about what it does to their body and how it affects them. Okay. That's kind of one part of the report chemical and what it does. Okay? The other part of the report is how does it affect everybody? Okay? How does it affect society? Right? An example of that could be if you were doing a, a project on uh, methamphetamine, for example. Okay? Um, methamphetamine still affects me even though I don't use it. Okay? It still has an effect on me as Joe Blow Canadian. Okay? And it does that because people who do use methamphetamine do things that cost me money indirectly, okay? Or cause me harm indirectly, or maybe directly, okay? Those are societal costs, okay? And what I mean by those would be things like, um, you know, maybe somebody who's got a really bad meth habit uh, mugs me on the street and steals my money, okay? That, that could be something that could happen to me. That's a societal effect. I didn't use methamphetamine, but it affected me, okay? Um, it could also have to do with my taxes. Okay? Someone who's you know, addicted to, to meth is going to um, be, you know, let's say, in the justice system a little more often than I am, okay? well, or a lot more often because I'm not. Okay? Um, but they're going to be in that a lot more often, and that costs the average taxpayer money. Okay, because that's how the courts are funded. Okay, they're funded through your taxes. A person who's on methamphetamine might overdose and end up in the hospital. Who pays for that? Us. That's what your taxes pay for. Okay, so those are societal costs. Okay, uh, other societal costs could be things like um, you know increased insurance costs because people choose to drink alcohol and then drive. Okay, they get they're much more likely to get into an accident than a sober person. Okay, and as a result, insurance rates go up. Everybody's insurance rates go up. Okay, that costs me, the guy who never drinks and drives, money. Okay, that's a societal cost. Okay, that sort of makes sense. Okay, um, other things could be uh, things like wait times in a hospital, okay, or wait times for things like MRIs or X-rays or things like that. Okay, the more people that are drawing on the system, the longer I'm going to have to wait. Okay, so if I need an MRI on my knee, okay, I'm you know, but I can still walk and move around. I'm pretty low on the totem pole. It might be months before I get that MRI. But the person who thought their skin was on fire and you know jumped off a you know, balcony and hurt themselves really bad is getting an MRI today. Okay? They're a higher priority than me. Okay? So things like that okay, are kind of societal costs. So that's what you want to think about when you're thinking about societal costs. Okay? Does that sort of make sense? Okay? So you know, kind of half to two thirds of your report is the chemical and all the kind of basic facts and then the other third of it okay, is going to be looking at what are the societal costs. All right? um, 
So the scope of your paper goes beyond an examination of health issues to encompass societal effects. Some suggestions for your project could be health hazards due to excessive consumption of alcohol and nicotine or other drugs, okay? Exposure to toxic chemicals, okay? Like mercury and amalgam dental fillings, which actually is, is a, a farce, okay? Back in like the late 90s, these dentists in the States uh, set up this big scam where they told everybody that their, <coughs> their metal amalgam fillings were toxic and they were slowly killing them. Okay? And they, they had them all coming in and having them removed and putting porcelain ones in. Okay? Like probably none of you, if you, if you have fillings, do not have a shiny metal filling like I do. Okay? Because lots of people don't do them anymore. Right? There was a small amount of mercury in these fillings that enabled them to be kind of shaped and then fit into the, into the cavity. Okay? And these guys made people panic by telling them mercury is really bad for you and it's, your filling is killing you. Okay? which is a total crock. Okay? There's more mercury in a can of tuna than there is in a dental filling. Okay? And the last time I checked, my fillings are still in my teeth. It's not like they're dissolving or I've swallowed one. Okay? And even if I did swallow one, it would just come right out. It's not like you could digest it. Okay? So it was a total farce, but they made people panic. Okay? And people didn't understand it. All these people went in and got their fillings replaced in these guys. They got pretty rich, and then they got caught. Okay, um, radon buildup in homes could be another one. Okay, that's something that people check for periodically. Radon's a gas that can be very harmful. Okay, uh, environmental concerns related to the handling, storage, and disposal of heavy metals, strong acids. Okay, so you know if there's a you know a train derailment and a bunch of chemicals spill out, okay, that could be a, a big deal. Okay, uh, flammable gases or any other topic that you have interest in. Okay, so you get to choose. So in your project, you report on the chemical nature of the toxin. We just talked about that. What type of chemical is it? Ionic, molecular, organic? Okay. How is its chemical structure related to its toxicity? What about it makes it toxic? Okay. Is it an acid? Is it a base? Is there something in it that makes it uh, dissolve nerves or whatever? Okay. Whatever it is that it does. Okay. How does it cause damage to human tissue? What are its toxic effects? Okay. What are the symptoms that a victim may exhibit? Okay. Um, in terms of societal effects, that's more open things to explore, maybe whether exposure to the toxin is by choice, okay? Or if it's in the workplace or in nature or something like that, okay? What are the costs? And guys, it says here, more than just a dollar figure. In fact, I don't want any dollar figures. You're not gonna find those, okay? And if you do, they're probably made up anyway, all right? Um, so don't try to find out how many millions of dollars methamphetamine costs the average Canadian taxpayer in a year. You're never gonna find that. Okay? I'm not looking for a number like that. I'm just looking for you to make the connections to why it costs us okay, here in Canada. Okay? And obviously it costs us here in Canada because taxes pay for things like healthcare and education, where in other countries they don't. Okay? If you go to the States, for example, there's no public health care there. It's a big deal. Right? Uh, you go to the hospital in the States and you can be financially ruined right? because you have to pay every cent of your hospital bill. Okay, um, does the government have regulations related to this toxin? Okay, what are the costs of so the suggestions here? Load on hospitals, man hours lost to illness. Okay, that's a big one, okay, to look at. Um, for example, if I'm sick, right, um, you know, I have a certain number of paid sick days. So if I'm sick and I don't come to work, I still get paid, but so does the person who comes in and subs for me. Okay, does that cost, does that cost taxpayer Joe? Sure it does, okay? It cost almost twice as much that day for you guys to get school. Okay. So those man hours lost to illness is kind of a big deal, okay? Uh, treatment centers, okay? Who pays to build those, those kind of things, imaging facilities, okay? Um, does the government have regulations related to this toxin? Are there exposure limits, okay? Are there age regulations? Is it legal to possess the materials? Do you have to have certain um, paperwork for that? Like for, uh, for us, we have to have certain paperwork that we have to keep up to date in order to have half the chemicals in the lab, okay? Because a lot of them, you know, in the wrong hands could be dangerous. Um, are there disposal requirements? Okay, again, that waste bucket that you guys were using yesterday, okay, every year we have to make sure that that stuff gets taken to like the Swan Hills disposal facility, okay, and properly disposed of. All right, and then lastly, an opinion. Based on what you learn about this toxin, what are your feelings on it? Should it be banned? Should there be greater restrictions and regulations put on its use, disposal, etc.? cetera? Okay, uh, one other thing here, guys, about the nature of the chemical toxin. Okay, um, I've had people who do their uh, project on things like, um, they'll, they'll do their whole project and they'll be on something like marijuana, for example, okay? Marijuana is a plant, 
this is supposed to be on a toxic chemical. So if that's what you're looking at, then look at like THC, which is the chemical part of marijuana. Okay, that's what, that's what we're looking for here. Okay, so if you're doing something like that, okay, uh, make sure you're choosing the chemical and not kind of an overall group or an organism or something like that. Okay, all right. Um, citing references, super important. Okay, you need to cite your references. Right? So if you take information from a website, you need to make sure you record information about that website and put it at the end of your report in your bibliography okay? or your references cited section. I'm going to talk about that here in a minute. Okay? Um, so anytime you use someone else's research, work, pictures, material of any kind, you have to cite them as a reference. Okay? In this way, they are given credit for their work and you have not plagiarized from them. Okay? To do this effectively, in your paper, put the person's name in brackets with the year, okay, et cetera. So I'll show you what that looks like right here. Now, uh, if I'm citing um, a website or something like that, it's going to look like this. Okay, it has to look like this. Author's name, the date the article was posted, okay, the name of the article, that would be in this case, Vive le Quebec, Vive le Canada. Okay? And then the name of the website, the Daily News. Then you put in the URL. Okay, so www.ipromiseimnotplagiarizingthisperson.com. Okay? And then the day you accessed it, that would be March the 3rd, okay, 2020. Okay? That's, that, all of that information needs to be in there. Now, sometimes it's hard to find some of this information. Right? Especially, for some reason, authors' names. Okay? You really have to look hard for that sometimes. Okay? Um, unless, of course, it's somebody's blog. Okay? If it's somebody's blog, then yeah, you'll probably be able to find their name. But beware of blogs. Anybody can have a blog. Okay? Crackpot Joe's blog about crack. Okay? It's probably not a reliable website to be taking information from. Okay? Just putting that out there. Okay? On that same note, Wikipedia, kind of crappy. Okay, you can get some of the basic factual information from there, but I wouldn't go too far because the nature of Wikipedia is anybody can put stuff on there, and the fact checkers are really far behind. Okay, I once had a student on this particular assignment years ago who was doing their project on uh, crystal meth. Okay, and um, they wrote in their paper that crystal that Adolf Hitler died of a crystal meth overdose. And I'm like, uh, where did you get that? And he pulled up Wikipedia and showed it to me, and it was in there. I'm like, okay, crystal meth actually was developed by the Nazis for their Blitzkrieg campaign. Most of their Blitzkrieg soldiers were actually on crystal meth while the Blitzkrieg was going on. Okay? But that's not what Adolf Hitler died of. He died of an acute case of Luger in brain. Okay, that's how, that's how he died. Okay, but he didn't die of a crystal meth overdose, but it was on Wikipedia. Okay, it isn't on there now because fact checkers finally found it. But okay, there's anybody can put stuff on there, and sometimes there's really crazy stuff there. Okay, uh, so just kind of be wary of using Wikipedia. Okay, really good sites to use are government sites or university sites where it's actual research. Okay, um, so try and find the author's name. Um, sometimes government sites will be. Uh, multiple contributors. There'll be more than one person who's contributed to the article. In that case, you may have to write multiple contributors instead of an author. Okay. Um, the date it's posted, usually that's somewhere on the article. If you can't find that, it's the last day the site was updated. Okay. Uh, and then the name of the article, that shouldn't be hard to find. Name of the website, that should, shouldn't be hard to find. Okay. Uh, but make sure you have the URL as well and the date you accessed it. Guys, this is the part people screw up. This is like five really easy marks out of the 25. All you have to do is write it like that. Inevitably, what I get is people put down five URLs as their references cited. Okay. Well, those URLs might as well be www.ididn'tlistentomrcoderre when he explained what he wanted.com. www.iwillingly accept zero out of five for this crap.com. Okay? <laughs> if it doesn't look like that, that's what you're going to get. Okay? It needs to be in this format. Okay? Now, a note on plagiarism. Don't do it. It's bad. Okay? If you get caught doing it, okay, you can get in big trouble, right? uh, especially at the university level. Right? If they catch you plagiarizing at the university level, you get kicked out of school and you don't get a refund. And it follows you around like a criminal record. Okay? 
a new guy in university copied a term paper, got caught, got kicked out, and he couldn't get in anywhere else. Okay? They followed him around and no one else would accept him. Okay? So it's bad. Don't do it. Okay? The second part of it is you don't learn anything by copying somebody else's stuff. Okay? Uh, fourth point, Google Classroom now has originality reports. It will search all the vastness of the internet to see if your stuff came from somewhere else. So don't do that because I'll know. It also, I also know when you write stuff that I don't understand. Okay, like when you're telling me about you know the the certain ring structure of cyclobenzocrine or whatever. Okay, and I'm like, uh, I don't even know what that means. You sure as hell didn't write it. Okay, because I once had a kid do that. He handed in somebody's like doctor level thesis on something, and I'm like, can you explain this to me? No, that's what I thought. Okay, yeah. So make sure it sounds like you wrote it because you did. Okay? I, I know what a 16-year-old should be writing. Okay? I know what that sounds like, so make sure your sounds out. Okay, so everyone understand the references cited. Okay, another thing that you need to do, planning. Planning is the easiest five marks on the whole assignment. I'm looking for two things. Okay? I am looking for a timeline. Right? Just record every time you work on the assignment, or plan when you're going to work on the assignment. Okay, so you can write down March 3rd, okay, worked on research in class or planned paper or whatever. Just write something, this is, a, this is one of the days you worked on. Okay, just record when you're working on it, okay, or record when you plan to work on it. So everybody has a timeline. Okay, the second thing I'm looking for, you have a choice. You can either have an outline or a thought web. Okay, whichever one makes more sense to you. Okay, but something that says, I thought about the topics I was going to talk about and how they're going to be tied together. Those two things, okay? An outline or thought web and a timeline, five marks. Okay? You have those things, it's five marks. Okay? It's the easiest five marks. What do people always forget? They're planning. Okay? And they lose five marks if they don't hand in any planning. Right? All you have to do is have a timeline and something that says, I thought about what I was going to do. Next. Where do you want us to put uh, it can be probably near the end with your references cited. All right, so the format of this, okay, there's a wide range of formats that I'll accept, okay, PowerPoint presentations or Google slide, you'll see I included one there for you, okay, you can have an essay, okay, that's fine as well, okay, uh, things like that. I wouldn't, I mean, you could do a movie, but boy, it's a lot of work for this amount of marks, I wouldn't, okay. Um, if you have another format in mind, run it past me, but posters are not going to do the job, okay. All right. Um, so your project should include some visual aids, pictures, graphs, diagrams, something like that to help you uh, in aid in your explanation and evaluation. Okay, be creative. This, this project will require some work beyond the two class periods you're going to get, and as a bare minimum, you're looking at between 800 and 1,000 words. Okay, if your report is 800 words, don't expect 100%. Okay, that should be able to meet the kind of basic requirements of the project. Right? Most of the time, projects that are really good are somewhere around 1,200 okay, to 1,500. That's about a page and a half in Google Docs default settings. Right? So it's not a huge amount. Okay? And remember that your bibliography and your planning don't count toward your word count. Okay? Just your report. All right. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you're doing a Google Slide presentation, Google Slides doesn't count the words. So what I would do is I would write everything in Google Docs and then copy it over into whatever slide you want it, and then Google Docs will count it for you. Okay? And you'll have some idea um, how long it is. That's under the Tools tab, by the way. Okay? Uh, so that's what we're looking for there. Okay? And your project is going to be evaluated in five categories. Initiating and planning, which we just talked about, so your timeline and your outline or thought web. Okay? Analysis and interpretation is basically what you say and does it make sense, is it factual, how did you organize your ideas. Okay? Communication. When I read your project, do I understand it? Does it make sense? It's not one long sentence. Don't laugh. It happened once. Okay? There was a capital letter at the beginning and a period at the end, and there weren't any other forms of punctuation anywhere in between. Craziest, longest sentence ever. Okay? Um, so make sure that it, you, know, you follow grammar and spelling and you know, that kind of thing. Okay? If, if I can't understand it, it's going to be pretty hard for me to mark it. So make sure that you communicate your ideas. Make sure you've got flow. Okay, to your project, and that's the danger in the Google Slides is it gets really choppy. Okay, like this and then this and then this and all these bulleted lists, and there's not really any connection between anything. Make sure you're connecting your ideas. That's a big part of the communication mark. 
Okay. Uh, research and investigation, so that's your references cited. Remember, you're looking at a minimum of five references, okay, minimum of five, all properly cited in this format. Okay, and then overall, that's your format, your creativity, your quality. Okay, um, you know, did you have diagrams? Were those di diagrams meaningful and tied to what you were saying? Okay, um, you know, when I read through it, I'm not stumbling over it. Okay, uh, it doesn't look like it's bleeding. Okay, that means like the spell checker is so bad okay, that the whole report is underlined in red. Okay, because I, I will do that. I usually run the spell checker and if your report is bleeding, that's what they call it. Okay, it's full of spelling mistakes. That's really bad. Okay, um, run the spell checker yourself first. Okay. Um, so that's the five categories. So it'll be out of 25 marks. Okay, and it goes in the same section of your marks as your lab reports and it'll be weighted the same as they are. Okay. All right, questions on what you're doing? All right, you have the rest of class here to work on it, and then obviously all of Thursday's class as well. Okay.